Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to see you, and it's lovely to be here, and it's uh, lovely to celebrate or commemorate our Remembrance Day service. We've got the, the wreath. It's, we realize it's a couple of days ahead of November the 11th, but this is our Remembrance Day service. We'll begin the service with David and doing announcements for us. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all for our November 8th service here at uh, St. Albans Ashcroft. And uh, this morning, uh, we're still awaiting the uh, final count for the Fraser Nicola riding in our provincial election. And uh, we will know more information on that this week. Uh, while there may be minor changes in the seat count, uh, we will have an NDP government for the next four years from our election. As we're recording this on Tuesday, November 3rd, the U.S. is holding their final voting and counting will begin today. Uh, you should have, we should have some indication of the results by the time uh, you are participating in this service and, and listening to it on, on your computer. It is important for us to remember and to realize that God is in charge. No matter what your personal views are, we are still all here to work together for the highest good in our church, in our community, in our province, in our country, and in our world. You will be aware that BC is in the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. Since early September, we have seen the actions of small groups who have disregarded the COVID protocols, leading to an increased number of active cases and a dramatic rise in the number of people being monitored by public health due to real and potential exposure to someone with COVID-19. Recently, Dr. Henry shared the story of an 80-year-old who passed away uh, from COVID. This individual had attended a home party where the family had gotten together from various parts of the province and they had not exceeded the guidelines. They had been very careful. However, all but one of them that were exposed to COVID at that event developed the, the virus and the elderly person did pass away. So it is really important for us to keep up our continued care, to be kind, to wash our hands, to wear our masks when, indoor pub when in indoor public places. And especially now, we will need to be patient as the virus will be with us throughout this coming winter. I want to thank the Ashcroft Pharmacy who have been doing a great job in delivering flu shots. And if you haven't already done so, call to make your appointment with them. Uh, I was on a call this morning and uh, we have, uh, Interior Health has so far distributed all of their uh, the flu vaccines. There is, uh, uh, half of it has been uh, put into, into circulation and uh, so there is lots of, of flu vaccine and uh, although there may be uh, temporary shortages, it's just a matter of a day or two until the pharmacy gets their next batch from, from uh, uh, Interior Health. Also, Interior Health will be getting a, another batch of uh, flu vaccine uh, in the next two weeks from Health Canada. So there is not a shortage. When you hear the rumors, know that that is not the case, okay? Although some fat pharmacies have been very, very busy with that and therefore they have run out of their supply, it's only a matter of days before that is replenished uh, for them. For now, we will continue with our virtual services. We would love to hear from those of you who are joining us in worship by, me, by phone or email. We are eager to develop new ways of both creating and sustaining spiritual community, and we want to ensure that we offer something that will be meeting you where you are. Your ideas are and input are crucial to us, and this is important, so please do contact us. We want to take a moment to bless and thank all those who have been sending in your support to this ministry through your thoughts, prayers, and financial contributions. Your gifts remind us of the key role you play in helping our world thrive through this difficult time. We want also to thank those who continue to support our Soups On ministry to ensure that those in need have a warm meal each week. 
We want to especially thank the Village of Ashcroft, the Ashcroft Terminal, Cal Tire, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and Zion United Church. And if I have missed any, uh, Martina will add them to the list uh, when she comes up. And all the others of you who have stepped up to help as well. We continue to share coupons to our local restaurants to those who come to Soups On so that this program is a blessing both to the individuals in need and to our local businesses who are struggling to operate in these difficult times. I would like to thank you again for joining us and now we will move into our worship service. Okay, all right. So this morning, as we're, we're commemorating our Remembrance Day service, I want to remember two people particularly who are connected to our church. Our Canon Lois Petty's husband, Bill, um, was in the Second World War, and also Marg and Joe Lohman's son um, I, I was in the services and has died. And so I just wanted to remember them as well, to keep them in our prayers. We'll have a moment of silence now as we prepare our hearts for worship. <clears throat> For the freshness of this new day, thanks be to you, O God. For the morning's gift of clarity, its light like the first day's dawn, thanks be to you. In this newborn light, let us see afresh. In this gateway onto what has never been before, let our soul breathe hope for the earth, for the creatures, for the human family. Let our soul breathe hope. Amen. And our collect for this morning. Holy One, you sent your Son, Jesus the Christ, to be the light of the world. Free us from all that darkens and ensnares us and awaken us to your eternal light and joy. Through the power of Jesus, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we'll have our first reading. The uh, Old Testament reading is from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, and it concerns the conquest of Canaan. Uh, for the Hebrews, it's a period of transition from nomadic wandering life to an agricultural mode of living. And without doubt, the conquest of Canaan was gradual, extending through hundreds of years, and was accomplished not only by strife, but intermarriage and mutual agreements. Champions called judges emerged from time to time, stimulated by the spirit of Jehovah. They fought the holy wars to rescue, rescue Jehovah's people. So our first reading is from Joshua 24, first three verses, and then skipping over to 14. Uh, then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if you are willing, unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, 
Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, and he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. And he said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Our song this morning is Psalm 78, verses 1 to 7. Give ear, O oh my God, oh, give ear, O oh my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commands our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. And let us pray. Holy One, strengthen our faith and guide us through the uncertainties of our journey, especially during this pandemic time. Hold before us the vision of your eternal love made known to us in Jesus, your Son. Amen. Our second reading is from Paul's first letter to the church at Thessalonica. Thessalonians Chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is from the 25th chapter of Matthew. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. 
When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while I went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, I'll begin this reflection with a poem called Love Preceded Them by T.J. O'Gorman. Face to face with our limits, blinking before the frightful stare of our frailty, promise rises like a posse of clever maids who do not fear the dark because their readiness lights the search. Their oil becomes the measure of their love, their ability to wait, an indication of their capacity to trust and take a chance. Without the caution or predictability of knowing day or hour, they fall back on that only of which they can be sure. Love precedes them. Before it, no door will ever close. How do you hear this story as a story that is filled with God's grace? At the heart of Jesus' message lies a generous God who invites us to generosity even at great cost to ourselves. Yet this parable scares me because I know better. I'm always forgetting the extra oil. I'm pretty much unconscious and unprepared most of the time. I'm continually like a child learning to tell time again. Be careful, slow down, go deeper. Love the darkness, expect delays. The difference between the wise and foolish maidens was that the wise ones allowed for the possibility that the bridegroom would come in his own time, and they prepared for a long wait. Part of the Jewish tradition of the time was that the bridegroom would come to the house of the bride's family, where the party would continue and the marriage would be consummated. The women knew the wait was worth the love they would be able to show when the bridegroom came with his bride. The task of the bridesmaids was to welcome the bridegroom when he arrived. We read in the story that all ten maids slept. The sleeping was not the problem, but it was that five of them left to replenish supplies. The Greek words used for stay awake can be interpreted to mean stay alert, engaged, for there's a task to do. Could it be that the maid's fear of the bridegroom's reaction to them causes them to flee to the town? Could it be that waiting in the darkness, even if their lights had gone out, would have been a more faithful way to stay engaged with the role assigned to them by their master? If Jesus is to be found amongst the naked, hungry, thirsty, and criminal, Could it be that he would respond with compassion to the five maids who might come trembling before him, confessing they'd run out of oil? It might be better to stay in the darkness rather than flee the scene from fear of being found wanting. It seems that fear of being wrong sends many of us running to make sure we have enough oil rather than sitting in uncomfortable darkness for any length of time. It is hard to wait with faith in darkness, knowing one's own resources have run out. 
We have been wise and we have been foolish. We've been asked to stay awake and we've slept, yet the promise of God's love remains. God will welcome us with God's generous, universal love. It's not the extra oil. It's not running off into the night to get the oil. It's not knocking on the door, and it's not even staying awake that makes the difference. It's that we limit God in our lives by our own thoughts and in the many ways we distract ourselves. When we hear this story again, ask yourself, who is closing the door? Is the love of God so limited? Is God so small that God will close the door on those who are slow to listen and respond? Or is it us who close the door? Read these verses again and ask yourself, imagine, of what kind of a God do they speak? Keep awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour when your love will be questioned. And at that time, will you open the door to some child of God looking for love, or will you close it in their face? If you tell stories which limit the love of God, you will limit the love of your own heart. Jesus does not mention oil, nor the wisdom or folly of those who bring extra or those who fail to. Jesus' critique is for those who fall asleep. Remember, as the bridegroom was delayed, all of them had become drowsy and slept. We all know what it is to wait. Waiting is often hard, really hard, and is often tinged by anxiety. Whether what we are waiting for is good or bad hardly matters. The anxiety and stress of the living in the in-between time of waiting can be difficult. And this parable reminds us that we are not alone in our waiting. Jesus tells this parable in his own in-between time, his own time of waiting. This story is set between Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem and his trial and crucifixion. And one thing Matthew and all the evangelists agree on is that Jesus knew what was coming. And so here he is, teaching the crowds facing off with his opponents and instructing his disciples even as he waits for the coming cross. Jesus, too, knows how difficult waiting can be and is with us and for us in our waiting. We recognize that opportunities for waiting on Jesus' presence are all around us. Each time we work for justice, we testify to the presence of Jesus Each time we bear each other's burdens, we testify to Jesus' presence. Each time we advocate for the poor or reach out to the friendless or work to make this world God loves a better place, we testify to the presence of the risen Christ. Jesus said that where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there among them. How many times do you think that's happened over the last two millennia? We know Jesus' character. He taught, healed, and broke bread with anyone who would join him. And he was known particularly for his compassion toward the poor and the outcast. We prepare for the fulfillment of Christ's purposes on earth by doing what he did. We prepare for God's kingdom by seeking it and God's justice. We prepare for God's kingdom by seeking it in the here and now, gaining strength from a life of prayer and meditation to empower us to work as Jesus did. If we wanted to seek that, if we expected that God's purposes on earth, the fulfillment of Jesus' work in the world, were really going to happen, Wouldn't we be doing these things? 
God is with us. God desires the best for us. God invites us to celebrate with the bridegroom as he shares his life with us. Paul closes this part of his letter to those first century Thessalonians that found their own waiting nearly intolerable with these words. Therefore, encourage one another. Yes, that is our role as followers of Jesus. We are those who wait for each other, wise and foolish alike. We sit vigil for each other at times of pain, loss, or bereavement. We celebrate achievements and comfort after disappointment. We give hope when hope is scarce, relief when it is needed, and courage when we are afraid. We help each other to wait, prepare, and keep our faith. We encourage each other with the promises of Christ. That's what it means to be Christ's followers then and now. And that's why we come together to hear and share the hope-creating promises of our Lord. And once more, the poem which began this reflection. Face to face with our limits, blinking before the frightful stare of our frailty, promise rises like a posse of clever maids who do not fear the dark because their readiness lights the search. Their oil becomes the measure of their love. Their ability to wait, an indication of their capacity to trust and take a chance. Without the caution or predictability of knowing day or hour, they fall back on that only of which they can be sure. Love precedes them. Before it, no door will ever close. Stay awake and be alert, for the presence of the risen Lord is with us. Thanks be to God. And for our statement of faith, it's in the uh, bulletin. Let us proclaim together our conviction of and commitment to God's purpose in creation. We believe that God gave birth to the universe and all that is in it, and we proclaim that God's life is beyond and within it all. We believe that in Jesus, God was revealed in human flesh, and we proclaim that all is recreated through Christ's saving work. We believe that God's Spirit energizes the created order, and we proclaim that all things are one, and everything lives in God. Amen. And please prepare yourself for prayer. And now we come to that time where we are able to just be still and be able to feel that blessing and that connection with God. And as we pray together, Lord of love and light, shine into our lives and bring your peace into our souls. In this week of remembrance, we honor those who have served to protect our freedom, those who have lost their lives, and we pray for those who have lost loved ones in conflict and through the collateral damage of war. We think of those who are now serving in our Army and Navy and Air Force and all of their support people for the services and their families. We ask for healing of the deep scars of conflict that mark our world wherever there is a war. And may our remembering be for new beginnings. And may your forgiveness be our forgiveness. And we take a moment just to remember. Lord of love and light, shine into our lives and bring your love into our souls. 
Remind us of the amazing ways you have loved us even when we've ignored you. And open our hearts to receive your loving spirit. Open our minds to receive your wisdom. Open our hands and hearts to show others your loving compassion. And Lord of love and light, we hold in our hearts those around us who feel isolated, alone, and unloved. We bring them to you to shine your love into their lives. We hold in our minds those who are overwhelmed by their needs and difficulties. And we hold in our hands your loving compassion to give them. And Lord of love and light, there are people and places that are dark. Help us all to cope with the unknowns and the outcomes that we may not wish. Protect our health care workers and all from COVID-19. Help us to be responsible and bring new and fresh ideas that renew lives and finds answers. Shine forth your light and love in their lives and in those places where it is needed and where there are people and places that have closed their minds to their spiritual value, heal those who are ill, those who are bereaved, those who are suffering with mental health difficulties. We pray for your health and your healing and your wholeness to be revealed in all of them. Our blessings and love go out to all who are seeking their health renewed and know that you do that in and through them. Shine forth your light and love and open their minds to your healing presence within them. There are people and places that need our hands reaching out to them with your loving compassion and may our reaching out to them with your love and compassion uh, shine forth your light and love on them. And thank you that the light touches us too as we share. And giving thanks, we say thank you, God. Thank you, God of our life and love. As we say, amen. I'm back in our bulletins to our confession and absolution. Together we say, Merciful and gracious God, we gather here this day, coming together, seeking your healing wisdom. Our lives are filled with anxiety and fear. We turn our backs on people in need and close ourselves away from the opportunities to serve. Confusion and anger abound in our world and in our hearts. Forgive us when we have chosen the pathways of greed and fear instead of the highway of peace and hope. Bind up our souls and calm our spirits. Teach us again to turn to you in love. Write on our hearts the commandment to love our neighbor as we ourselves would want to be loved, as you have loved us. It is in Jesus' name that we offer this prayer. Amen. God's love has been poured over us to heal and nourish our thirsting spirits. We have been forgiven. Now we are challenged to go forth in peace and hope to a hurting world. Thanks be to God for all God's mercies shown continually to each one of us. Amen. And as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Creator, for the way you feed our souls and change our hearts to unite us with you. We go now to live as followers of the Christ, as people of compassion, as those who seek to serve and heal the world. And may your presence, love, and favor go with us and remain with us always. Amen. Together we say our doxology. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May the light of your souls guide you. May the light of your soul bless the work you do with the secret love and warmth of your heart. May the sacredness of your work bring healing, light, and renewal to those who work with you and to those who see and receive your work. And the blessing of our glorious God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and with all for whom you pray, always. Amen. And we depart in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.